Hey everybody, it's Mike. Welcome to another issue of my, uh, my vlog. Um, we're here at the world headquarters of Newmark Knight Frank, who's hosting us today. Um, it's extraordinary offices and we're very appreciative of all their support in the commercial real estate tech sector. So, you know, when I got into the space around 2011 and 2012, it's literally a handful of startups, about 30 million invested in the space around that time. Fast forward today, uh, we're projecting about six billion invested in CRE Tech in the U.S. this year, and give or take about 3,000 startups. So the, the growth's been extraordinary. Um, one of the challenges, I think, though, in the sector is that there are so many startups, there's so much innovation taking place, it's, it's challenging for a lot of people to keep up with um, all the innovation that's happening. So at, at CRE Tech, our mission is to help everybody discover the great innovation, the great progress that's being made, connect the technology and the commercial real estate sector. So in this uh, episode of my vlog, I wanted to shed light on four startups that, that have really gotten my attention that I think are doing really innovative things in the space. So I wanted to introduce them to our audience at CRE Tech, talk a little bit about you know, why they got in the space now, what they're doing that's so innovative, and what their perspectives are on the industry. So it's my pleasure to introduce LD from Cherry, Jan from Byproxy, Rob from Lyra Intel, and Guy from Skyline AI. Welcome everybody. Thanks Thank for spending you. some Thanks time. For so um, LD, let's start with you. So give us a little bit a short intro in terms of you and your background. Yeah, definitely. So I'm, I'm originally from the States, but really grew up in Israel. So I went to school in Israel, started my first company there when we were 14, with today my same co-founder. Um, Army in Israel, went to school in Israel afterwards, um, started another company that we hadn't spun off in London, um, came back here, started another company that we sold to Oppenheimer, and then recently, last couple of years, started Cherry, which is a data fusion platform for the real estate, so helping banks, insurance companies, um, large organizations manage data collection and processing. Um, been having a lot of fun these last few years, um, so far. Yeah. Uh, we'll see how that keeps going. Yeah. Jan, uh, tell us uh, where you came from and, sure. and what you're doing now. Thanks, Mark. Um, recently was uh, head of development, broker, broker channel development at uh, a company called 10X, formerly auction.com. Um, my partners and I came together from that company. We we're the executive team there. And just, you know, we think there's, there's a need out there for the marketplace, particularly in the middle market, you know, for uh, a technology that helps them trade. And so we've banded together, a uh, eclectic group of folks really with trading, acquisitions, dispositions, backgrounds. We were formerly also at private equity firms and banks. So we really saw a need and opportunity in the market to really help the middle market trade assets. Great. Rob? Hey, thanks for having me here. Um, so uh, I started out uh, in real estate. I'm a real estate guy. Um, has had every job in real estate from management to construction. Um, but as much as I wanted to stay in real estate, I also enjoy technology um, and, and providing services to commercial real estate firms. Um, my first company that I started was Defease with Ease or Commercial Defeasance. Um, was very fortunate, sold that to Summit Partners. Started my second company, which was in the asset management space in the affordable housing side. Uh, ended selling that up, uh, ended selling that to Summit as well. Um, and then went into a joint venture and started a bunch of companies, primarily focused on CRE tech, um, started a company called Investor Management Services that helps commercial real estate firms manage their investors. Um, and uh, most recently, my, my latest venture, which is Lira, which is all about monetizing residents at apartment communities. Guy? Sure. So thanks for having me. Absolutely. Um, so I'm coming from technology background. I was uh, programming from the age of 13. I was an engineer in the Israel Defense Forces. Uh, did some technology roles and had some uh, uh, startups together with my uh, co-founders. We are four co-founders working together for many years. So we did uh, um, big data and AI for many years in different industries and now we're trying to bring this to real estate. My uh, co-founder and the CTO is, uh, is always saying that we did AI much before it was cool. <laughs> so, uh, so now we're trying to bring this into real estate and at Skyline AI, uh, we use artificial intelligence to uh, uh, source for real estate investment opportunities and, um, and make better real estate investment decisions. Um, that's it in a nutshell. Yeah, so I think like one of the things that's most interesting to me, um, having been in this for a while, 
uh, is sort of the cycle that we're in now. And the reason why I, I got all you four together today was because you're all, as I said earlier, sort of new entries in, in this phase. Now, Jan, you've been in it for a while. You've been in CRE Tech for a while. You had great success at 10X, and now you're building by proxy. So maybe the way we start the conversation is, why now? You know, why is the time right for by proxy right now? And why launch something new when there's so much, uh, not competition, but there's so much out there in terms of CRE tech? Sure. Uh, I think there's, a, I mean, three logical reasons why now. One is um, everything's changing, right? I mean, you know, the, books like The Third Wave and stuff like that, you know, you have this transition on the internet that people are moving from it being just simply something to browse on to actually buy stuff on and, you know, people are buying not just small things, they're buying large things, airplane engines, airplanes, boats, why not real estate, right? I mean, that, that two is um, our industry hasn't evolved. It really has been dormant uh, through this transition. And, and I know, I grew up in the Bay Area. I was part of the various tech booms in the Bay Area, and uh, real estate didn't really participate with that. Uh, and lastly, I think some of these technologies today are just, you know, I mean, like these gentlemen here are, are, are incredible, where they, they could use data, formulate data. And at the end of the day, you know, I think why, um, you know, the solutions are coming to bear today is data is free, right? That, that's a big difference today. It's what you do with that data, how you use that data, and I think that's why now. LD, what, what, what are your thoughts yeah, on no, that? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I think that some data is free. CoStar is still really expensive, right? Mm -hmm. um, Clearly um, bought well, maybe, maybe, somewhere maybe, along the way. Maybe right? the phrasing is data will be free, right? Well, we'll, we'll <laughs> see. I don't know. It seems that people still think that's the advantage. But I think what happened or is happening right now is you know, real estate has always been a relationship driven business, right? So, um, it, especially in the investment space, right? You have people that you know, tell them you're going to find a deal and they'll be very skeptical. They'll tell you, what do you mean deal? I know everyone in the city. I know every person here. You know, you're not going to find an opportunity. And then you say, well, what if you looked at this? Oh, and they get a little skeptical, right? Um, I think we're in that process where that world is starting to die out. Um, we've come to the point where the relationship-driven aspect of the business needs to be augmented by humans, by, by technology. And we saw this happen in other industries, right? We saw um, public equities go through that process, 80s, 90s, eventually early 2000s, to the point today where the notion of somebody trading stocks at home and, and beating the market is just unfathomable, right? Um, then we started doing it in private equity. We did it in the later stage private equity. Other companies were doing it in early stage private equity and still happening today in early venture. Um, Chris Farmer and his guys, right? I mean, people are really doing that in the early stage. And then you look at real estate and you realize that it's still very much a 100% human driven business in, in pen and paper. And, and you, all you have to do is just a little extra to, to give them just something to, to better augment that decision making process. And beating benchmarks, right, becomes all of a sudden a really easy task to do, right? So data is really becoming king. Rob, from your perspective, same kind of question. Like you, you've had multiple successes in, in technology and real estate. Why Lyra now? You know, where did you, what did you see as an opportunity? Oh, because I, I think it comes down to it's an, it's an implementation issue that we have in this market. It's not, this technology has been around. I mean, five years ago, we were talking about data lakes and, and data warehouses and things like that, but nobody could absorb it unless you're at the very, very high echelon of, of users. So sure, your equity residentials, your, your big uh, power users would, I typically go in the lower end of the market. I like to go where most of the operators are, the ones that have 10 to 20 properties. And, and I think what, what we try to do, and, and the reason why I started Lyra now, is because for my past life, the, the consumer is only going to take so much, something that they can understand and they can implement and they can see results. And Lyra is all about generating revenue for a property. So Lyra is an app that when it basically provides goods and services to residents at a, at a property, when they buy those, those things, they get money and, and the, the property gets money. That all of a sudden drives NOI. And so when you have a portfolio and you can't just raise rents because your markets are flat, where else can you go? And that's, that's what started it. Got it. Guy, from your perspective, you know, you and your co-founder and the team that you've assembled, you guys could have gone and, in, into any industry, right? I mean, you probably had m multiple options of what you were looking at. 
So why did you pick commercial real estate? And I bet you're asking yourself that some days like, <laughs> but really why? Yeah, so we find real estate very exciting. I mean, when we, we, uh, we did, as I mentioned at the beginning, we did AI for, uh, we did it in healthcare and later in, in video streaming industry, and this is a completely different industry. Um, but after, after we sold the last two companies, we started to invest and then we invested in real estate. And we saw how, uh, how um, in terms of technology, how back this industry is. Um, so we started to do something that we thought that will make our investment better. Um, but we thought at the beginning that this is a, a personal problem. Uh, and then we went to hear a talk. Uh, it was a commercial um, real estate um, um, venture, uh, not venture, sorry. Oh. <laughs> went to hear a talk, it was a commercial real estate uh, event. And there was uh, someone from the uh, uh, institutional, in, uh, large institution, he spoke about the analysis process in the institution. And when he finished, he, raised, uh, he opened for question, I raised my hand and I asked if, uh, if they're using technology in the underwriting process, in the sourcing process, and what kind of technology. So we thought for a few seconds and then he said, what do you mean if we use technology in, in the process? Of course we use technology. We use tremendous amount of technology. First, we all use computers and all the analysis is done with Excel files. So I think at this moment we understood that, um, and there are much more than that, of course, but um, at this moment, we understood that this is not just our own problem. This is something that should be uh, solved and changed. Um, and I agree with my friends, all everything that you said about the timing. And I think in our specific uh, business at Skyline AI, one more thing is that uh, real estate investors in the last 10 years or 12 years already, um, if in order to make a good yield, all you needed to do is to invest. And most of the people who did very good in the last 12 years will say that the next 12 years will look different. So I think that this is the timing when you really need uh, an advantage. And this is what we're trying to create. Got it, got it. Let's talk a little bit about how uh, your sites actually work, right? Because I think that's really important is that it's not just the idea, but it's what's behind it. So Rob, how, how does the actual site work? So, so we have uh, basically three offerings. And so um, our primary focus is, is multifamily space, but we also are in office. But basically what we provide is, is three solutions. One is for on-site property managers, and that's their engagement toolkit. So it's a CRM, it's where they can create events, it's where they can track the behaviors and actions of what the residents are doing. Like, um, do they have dogs? Are they going to the dog park? Are they going to the gym? Are they you know, doing the things that, that we want to know at a property? The second is an app that the residents use, and the, and the app is uh, called Caboodle. And basically, the Caboodle app is not only the way that they communicate with the property, you know, they can pay rent, they can pick up packages, they can do all that stuff, but the app is much more centered around community, not just property. And I think one of the things that we've realized that, uh, and there was a recent study done um, by reputation.com where they were saying, what kind of amenities do the new tenants want, the new residents want? And it wasn't the new rock climbing gym. It wasn't the, you know, the beer garden. It, you know, they, they want fast and easy and friendly communication and they want a sense of community. And, and so, um, so our app basically goes out and um, it goes and, and provides events and things that are going on, not just in the property, but in, in the entire community. Um, and we put all of the actions and the behaviors of what the property manager is doing with what the resident is doing, and we put it and we assemble it into a BI tool. And so a BI tool is where the asset managers and the marketing managers and even the property managers can see what's going on and are the actions and the events that they're doing, are they driving better engagement at a, re at a property? Are they driving, um, and because better engagement for us means more monetization and less, less or more retention. Right. I didn't realize beer garden was an option as an amenity. <laughs> oh, absolutely. That, that's an option. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I'm gonna bring that up on our next board meeting. <laughs> uh, Jan, sort of same question. So uh, what, how does buy proxy work and who's the market? So the, the market is really, you know, the U.S. trading environment in, is roughly 700 billion in the U.S. That's about how much in assets and, you know, that's duplex, triplex, and above. Our really, our three customers, pretty simple. It's a broker, it's a principal, it's a tenant, right? You come to our site, you're one of those. If you're a broker, the broker has 
four functions, right? He wants to buy property on behalf of a client. He wants to sell property on behalf of a client. He wants to lease a building on behalf of a client, or he wants to find space on behalf of a tenant. Um, if you're a principal, you want to do three things. You want to buy, sell, or you want to lease space. And then if you're a tenant, you want to do one thing, you want to find space. Right. So you, you, know, you come to our site, you categorize yourself correctly, and then we give you a multitude of tools based on that. You, you, we have a free MLS, so uh, we have in excess of 70,000 listings on the MLS at this point. You have a, uh, a free contact management system, you have a free ability to email, message, you have to organize all your contacts, and then the last part of it is, if you need help selling a property, buying a property, leasing a space, we have help for you. And we have help for you in, in a manner that the way the industry works. The industry works on an a la carte basis. When someone needs it, they buy it. It's not a subscription-based environment. And then we also can help you run a process. Uh, for selling an asset, buying an asset, all those things are taken care of. Great, great. LD, yeah, how does now, it work? Now I have the fun task of making back-end data <laughs> sound sexy. <laughs> um, yeah. So our clients are, are connecting thousands of data feeds, um, some of them in real time. And the big challenge they're trying to solve is, you know, instead of going to build these ETL processes on their own, building resolution engines, which is typically a very manual process of mapping schemas, um, and then building APIs on top of it, our platform does that for them. So they connect those data streams, um, one, two, typically somewhere in the low of thousands, then take all of our data, which is another you know, 10,000 data streams, connect all those data sets together, it identifies what cardinal object things, do. we call them cardinal objects, a, a building, a lot, a unit, these, these types of data objects to which we're gonna later attach data. And then our platform maps all of these different data sets, the, the fields um, get mapped both of these cardinal objects and to the actual schema object it's going to sit inside that. And then finally it does a lot of data resolution, you know, conflicts and things like that and eventually generates uh, an API. And most of our clients will consume that API as a back-end product to power whatever their front-end is or a lot of data science platforms will right. take it as is, you know, either as a dump or the entire API. And who, who's a client? Give me an example. Banks, insurance company, largest PNC insurance company in the world, some of the large MLSs including Real Estate Board of New York. Most of our clients like to stay confidential, but yeah, yeah, yeah. some are now public. So um, Hudson Gateway and um, Stratus and I look about and um, yeah, Keller Williams, Rebney, folks like that. Um, and Which yeah, are the so ones that want to stay private? <laughs> yeah, so like, all banks, all the insurance companies, <laughs> all the title companies, right? Uh -huh. um, they tend to be very cautious, and it's funny that, that process working with them has has been terrible, right? I mean, they're awesome clients and they're really smart, and we love the way they use our data, but onboarding with them is just hell, right? So it's compliance, which takes one to two months, best yeah, case welcome, scenario, welcome, right? Welcome, my friend. Welcome. And then, you know, yeah. ongoing <laughs> compliance. Welcome yeah. to our world. Yeah, it's yeah. Been, yeah. You're the property manager. Yeah. It can't be worse than the best. Yeah, it can be. <laughs> Try so. on-prem solutions. Yeah, yeah, it gets really fun. Guy, now, you gotta, you gotta dumb this down for me, okay? <laughs> All right? I'll try. Um, <laughs> I'm the dumb fuck here, so you gotta... <laughs> how does it work? So, um... Today we are connected to more than 130 different data sources from different kinds, structured and unstructured, public and private. We have some proprietary data that we get through partnerships. Uh, different kind of data, real estate related. Eventually we're trying to put our hands on every piece of information that might affect real estate values. Uh, demographics, education, crime, uh, restaurants in the areas and so on and so forth. 130 different data sources. Um, we combine all the data sources together. We started with multifamily asset class. Uh, today we're monitoring more than four, uh, 400,000 different properties, which is almost all the multifamily assets in the U.S. that has more than 50 units. And for each, un for each property we have like 10,000 different data points, going back in time up to 50 years, depending on the data source. So imagine like a huge data lake um, about multifamily. This is the, our ground truth of data. Um, and then we have our AI teams that are responsible for extracting uh, insights from the data and generating predictions. So we're trying to predict everything from what will be the asset value in the next few years, what will happen to the occupancy, to the rent, and so on. So we're looking from the market level to the submarket and the neighborhood and the asset. Um, so we have a platform 
that eventually you put in an asset, for instance, and you get all the information you need to know about the asset, including our projections of what will happen to the asset. Um, but regarding the clients, so we do not license the technology. We use the technology uh, for, we keep the technology for ourselves. Uh, and we partner with, um, with large real estate investors and we help them to deploy capital into uh, right. multifamily. And there's, there's a, I think there's a case study or an example or something on your website that I was... Uh, right, of a, of a, I don't remember the website. <laughs> <laughs> I'll check that later. Well, I saw but, it deployed. No, but I mean, yeah. it was a, yeah. sort of a narrative of how it was actually used or somebody was able to source a deal yeah. because they found some sort of you know, arbitrage between yeah, that's right. value so, and, and what was uh, Yeah, that's right. So we, uh, uh, we recently, uh, in June this year, we closed our first real estate transaction and we bought a um, $26 million multifamily asset in that's Philadelphia. Yeah, like LD, uh, we have partners that don't like publicity, so uh, I can't <laughs> I can't tell a lot about the the specific transaction. But the idea is that we we are able to to find investment opportunities using the platform to predict when an asset is going to be marketed um, and what the what the pricing we should pay at this timing at this time. Um, and we partner with, with uh, real estate investors, yeah. institutions, private equities, yeah. and so on, investment what managers. Did you start with um, I, I think two main reasons. On the, on the tech side, there's, we find that there's much more data in this space, more transparency, um, which make it easier for us as, a, as a, uh, something to start with. Uh, and on the investment side, um, our, our investors still have large appetite for multifamily investment. Uh, so this was the main reason. And we're now, uh, we just uh, completed um, round A and uh, it's announced recently, it was announced recently, we raised $18 million. Uh, so now we expand it to other asset classes. Probably in the next two, three quarters, we'll start making uh, transactions on other asset classes as well. It's a great question, though, Adi. Like, let's just, you know, if, if you're comfortable with it, tell, tell us how you funded this, uh, your, your sites and what have you. So who are some of your investors? Yeah, so Sequoia Capital invested uh, the seed, $3 million. Uh, we started in February 2017. Um, and recently uh, we completed round A, another $18 million, uh, from some very great investors, including Sequoia Capital. Uh, JLL Spark invested in this round. Um, another... Uh, top Israeli VC. Um, you can tell by my English that I'm not local, <laughs> so I'm from Israel. And, uh, and, um, um, and also NYCA from here, Hans, Mr. Hans Morris, who was the CFO at uh, Visa and, uh, sorry, President of Visa, CFO at Citi. Uh, so these are the main investors in the round. Rob, I think you're in the fortunate position to have yeah, self-funded mostly yeah, to completely, date. Yeah, completely self-funded. Um, yeah, I think, and I, I applaud everybody who has to go out there and, and raise money. I think it's, uh, um, you know, I just looked at it. and. Do you and, applaud or do you sympathize? No, I, the, you know, uh, I, I, I do. I, I really do. I think, you know, one of the things I, I go back and forth because at some point I'm like, Boy, it's one thing when you're just funding it yourself, you get no feedback, right? You're the boss of one. You don't have investors and, and a lot of experience. And and one of the things I've learned at being on the board with Summit Partners and a very different perspective in in, uh, in in the way that they approach things. And when you have an operator with a sort of a capital provider, it, it provides a really good insight. So um, yeah, I don't have to deal with boards and I don't have to deal with my decisions, but yeah, sometimes it's good to have that, that interaction. Do you think this, that's gonna change for you? Do you think at some point you'll go out and and, and do around and raise? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I think we toy with the idea. We get called all the time. Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, we're, but, but um, quite frankly, I'd, I'd rather be making sales calls and going in to see customers yeah. than to do a pitch deck. Good to day. be the boss. Right. Good to be the king. And, and Jan, you guys have also taken a little bit of a different approach in terms of your funding. I, from what I know, you've, you've gone with inside the industry, right? Yeah. So we took a much different approach. We really, I mean, we're a tool for the industry. So we really looked into the industry to raise our capital. We, self-funded as well, uh, uh, part of it, but we raised uh, a seed funding of about $3 million. We went out to the brokerage community. We have a, a, a group of founding broker councils that were kind of What's our, the advantage of doing it that way? Well, you know, the advantage is like, you have your customer base believing mm -hmm. in what you're doing, right? I mean, your customer base is investing. The better we do, the better they do, right? And so ultimately, I mean, we, 
we look to continue doing that um, potentially. And then we raised it from, uh, you know, my partners are from very institutional places. We're also f out of the brokerage firms. You know, Gordon, uh, our CEO, was a CBRE broker for 10 years. I was a Marcus and Millichap agent for over seven years. Uh, we both worked at Fortress. We both did acquisitions, dispositions. So we went to, you know, our friends uh, that are owners of real estate, uh, you know, lenders of real estate, um, the, uh, lease- Very organic. Re very organic, lease real estate. Yeah. And uh, those guys uh, were super excited to, very, you know, great. be a part of it. And LD, we connected through uh, our mutual friend, uh, Travis Putnam and, and uh, crew over at Navitas, who I'm big admirers of. and Clearly a, we are as well. Yeah, yeah, so that's a good one to have in your, in your corner. So tell us about how you funded the... Uh, yeah, so we, we started, obviously, Bootstrap, kind of like everyone else, um, but we just closed a, a nine million seed round led by Navitas. So um, uh, Jim, Travis, um, Gary, those folks are there. Um, Carthana is also investor. I was a great fund out of Australia, really active here in the States. Um, I look about, which is uh, Gary Oman is the chairman there, so founder of Altus Group, acquired Argus, Real Matters, um, really amazing investor, really understands real estate data. Um, Andrew from Dreamit, um, yep. those folks. Oh, um, wow, terrific. Yeah, well, um, also um, Dave, um, for Dave and Ryan, right? Um, Red Swan, I guess, is mm -hmm. where the, mm -hmm. the entity, that the, the last one. Um, so really great investors, kind of a mix of folks who really get venture, but within the real estate yeah, space, yeah. Um, and folks are just strategic yeah. fit. Um, we thought a lot about, you know, what's that, what's that right mix? Um, I kind of like having a board. Um, I like having people that can, A, keep us in check, but at the same time, the kind of board that it's not gonna, you know, come every, every Friday and say, hey, what, what are our, you know, look at the model, we're not, we're not where we're supposed to be, right? Um, but folks would say, hey, what can I do to help, right? How's this working out? You thought X. You know how's that how's that playing out that thesis? So I actually really like that. Um, and the flip side is right that um, you do have to kind of answer to people, but that's something which is um, okay if you find the right partners. And you know, we're very aggressive clearly in the market, um, and we have partners who are somehow even more aggressive than we are. So it works really well. <laughs> yeah. So I think um, you know in a couple of minutes that we have left, um, one of the things that I I talk about a lot in, in, in sort of the climate that we're in now is that you know investment and adoption is clearly a big gap in the industry that there's a lot of money coming in but if you looked at the actual adoption within the sector it's it's not really keeping up and i don't think that's necessarily a bad thing i just think it's a reflection of a very young industry and ecosystem and i think it's a net, it's going to there's going to be many factors that'll propel it whether it's demographics or whether it's just tech overall but one of the big questions for all of you is how are you going to get adoption for your site, your, your, your platform? Because it is the big challenge, right? Um, Rob, you're building a community. You're building a marketplace. You know, you're going to the institutions. You've got to, you know, to market to um, you know, the, uh, real estate owners and what have you. So what are, what are your thoughts? I'm not asking for your marketing plan about how you see sort of scaling in this industry. Guy, I'll start I with you. I think that one of the reasons for that is uh, it's two different industries. One is running very fast, right, the tech business, and the real estate business by nature is much slower. I mean, you paint the wall and you need to wait for the paint to, to get dry. So this is a, this is a real challenge. I think uh, this is one of the reasons why uh, you need to have enough funding uh, to have more time it will, I think, Real estate companies will move very fast. Um, real estate um, tech companies will move fast, but it will still be faster than a real estate uh, play, yeah. but slower than a traditional startup in a different industry. Um, so this is one of, uh, and I agree, this is one of the challenges that we're trying to solve. Um, Good luck. You know, it's, it's actually, no, it's interesting though. It's like, yeah, five years ago, 10 years ago, 
you didn't see a bunch of directors of innovation at shops, you know? Great. And even now, as you start to go down the, the line, um, you're starting to see more people in that, that sort of that role there, you know, and, and now some places still, it's a flawed execution. Some people just grab somebody and, and they don't really understand the job. I was recently, I don't know if I told you this story, I was recently at a shop and, and uh, their director of innovation was frustrated because she's like, I, I get so many calls of all these new companies. Everybody's trying to talk to me. I'm like, well, that's the greatest thing to be in. I mean, you need to have that private equity or venture capital approach on, on innovation. You know, you should be sitting there looking at CRE tech every day. What's new? Okay, I wanna, I wanna do that. And, and you can start to see that. So, um, you know, implementation is, is going to happen. I think once the, the buy-in happens, once the people that start looking at it um, start to do it, I, I think it's important. I think the other thing too is, um, hopefully we're gonna start to see a little bit more delineation between actual innovation and and implementation. I mean, right now you see the shops, and you know some groups are innovating, like they're trying to build products themselves inside their you know inside their their company, a real estate shop, which is not the right place, I don't think, to try to build technology, and um, and and breaking that down and having groups that are just focused on implementation. So great, good insights, Jan. You guys are obviously, you know, as you talked about, it's organic, right? But how do you scale a new platform in this environment fast? I think you, I mean, it's supply demand, right? I mean, the, those two concepts are at the heart of it. I think, uh, you know, the theme that I've heard also, you know, LD mentioned it and reiterate is, you know, at the heart of it is real estate, and the guy talked about it, real estate works in a certain way. It's slower. It, it, it has its own rhythm and paces. Relationships are critical to, to the way it works. Um, I kind of equated, you know, technology in my word is high IQ. Real estate is high EQ, right? Emotional, very, and it's that marriage is coming together. It's, you know, it, it hasn't been combined just quite yet, but it's coming together where you really provide these folks that are, that are great. They're highly um, capable people that have great emotional intelligence, but they need tools. And it's how do you adopt technology to the way it works and help them change it a little bit. You don't need to change it all right away, but get them using it, get them working on it, and then add more, add more, add more. LD, what about from your side? I think from we're Cherry, a little how, how fortunate guys, yeah. um, in the sense that we don't have to educate the market about the problem. Yeah. It's a problem they already have. So we have a long list of clients that we need to onboard, and it's just a matter of, of executing on that properly. And we're hoping that when we run out of that list, it keeps, I mean, we've only done inbound, so we've never had to do outbound sales. So we're hoping that that long list of inbound, when it starts running out, that's when the market, the rest of the market figures out what, what they need anyway, and that hopefully coincides, but we'll find out. Um, educating markets is always a difficult um, challenge. Um, I think what's happening in, in our world is that we're replacing mostly processes that people, they're very human intensive, right? So it's building your own engineering team, which is very hard for organizations that are not tech driven. They might have a director of innovation, but you know, their engineering team is not the kind of engineering team that can really run anything. And some of them have really great engineering team. I think CBRE is probably a good example. They have a you know, whole building worth of engineers out in Dallas, but then you ask what they're doing, they're building these app and applications, or they just had this new thing about they're using Azure for something, I don't know. Um, so there are some folks like that who are you know, a little further ahead than some of the other folks, um, but most of them have no clue what to do. So, Replacing an operation that's mostly done by a whole you know, bullpen of analysts doing things very manually, right? putting stuff in Excel, um, that's a process that's fairly easy to, to replace. All you have to do is explain to the business unit, you know, how much are you paying a year? $3 million. That could be half, you know, worst case scenario, faster, better than right. anything you're doing right now, and it seems a fairly easy value proposition to sell. Um, but as I said, you know, we're, we're in that fortunate position, at least for the next yeah. you know, 18 months, if I had to guess where we just have to knock out all this long list of folks who've reached out somewhere. Right. What would be your message though? Like, you know, I mean, I, I interact daily with either their commercial real estate brokers or commercial real estate developers or, you know, uh, private equity or, or banks and what have you that are, that are in this ecosystem. And I'm trying to get them to pay attention, right? Every day, that's what I'm doing every single day is, hello, pay attention here. Uh, and it's challenging. I mean, our conferences are scaling, obviously, is a great sign for everybody because that means more people are paying attention. But like what, to your former brethren, Marcus and Millichap and, and the other firms that you deal, what, what do you say to them 
that you know gets them to to want to pay attention to what's happening here because clearly something's happening right. and it's, we're not going backwards there's no bubble here i mean this is transformative technologies that are going to i hate the word disrupt but they're going to change the way the industry works what do you say i say embrace tech i mean i say embrace tech because uh, it's here to help you, not to replace you, right? I mean, I think that's a lot of the messaging that I hear from, the, like, I'm going to be out of a job in, you know, whatever, you know, five years, six. You're not going to be out of a job. Right. You know, the... A lot of our independent contractors, right, right, too. Right. Right? So it's, yeah, it's, listen, it's not really, the concept. Look, get better, more you, efficient. You've got a thousand great relationships. You've got a database of 5,000, whatever. Great. Well, you know, technology could exponentially improve that and it can potentially improve your existing relationships, it could add new relationships. Use it to do that and organize your stuff better. You have tools that act and behave like your back office, right? That, that you could be front and center if you're a principal talking to more brokers. Right. If you're a broker, you're talking to more principals. Yeah. If you're a tenant, you're talking to principals and brokers yeah. to get space. Right. So use tech. Rob, what about you? I mean, you've been in real estate your whole career pretty much. What, what do you say to your friends, your community, people that you're talking to as to uh, it's, why? You know, it's, it's tough because you know, they're all deal junkies, right? So you have, a, you have a, a typical real estate firm is like, you know, four partners that are all doing deals, doing deals, doing deals, and um, don't care about anything else. Now, we're also in a peak of a market. So, you know, from the multifamily side, you know, this first thing I'm probably going to do is look at what he's looking at because I know the last deal I chased on the multifamily side is 65 bidders. So, you know, it's you to, invest in to, to invest in myself. So I, I think that's, you know, it's really hard to get the attention of something unless there's that immediate result. What's that immediate benefit? And I think that's the only thing that we've been able, uh, where I've been successful in this space is all about finding they need to have some type of candy afterwards. What's yeah. the, what's the immediate result? I, I do a deal. I get rewarded. I feel good oh okay I, I you know install investor management solution oh I get more investors because my investors are happier and and all that kind of stuff I install Lira I make more money at a property and that's that's sort of the only way I've I figured out how to do it yeah clearly that's your value proposition right <laughs> yeah. I mean, that feeds right into yeah. what you're doing yeah and I, and I must say by the way it, it has to do with the timing and the pace and the adoption that you said you mentioned um, I think that uh, technology is coming into real estate that we we know that I mean uh, and, and a lot of people understand that today. We were surprised, I mean, when we, when we started the company, uh, one of our um, challenges or one of our thoughts was what will happen when we meet the veteran real estate investors. Um, but I think most of them, and we were surprised about that, most of them understand that technology is entering into real estate um, and that this will happen. And uh, we, we met one of the probably one of the top real estate investors, I, I will not mention the name, but, and, and we showed him the, the product. And he said that, um, and he's doing real estate for, I don't know, 40 years, doing very well. Uh, and he said, I can either, I mean, I know this will happen, uh, and my company will be, if I won't tap into this, my company will be obsolete, and I don't know if, how much time it will take. Um, and uh, so I can either, wait for this to happen or I can yeah. just, yeah, it would either be uh, you doing this or someone else, yeah. but this will happen and I can either join this or yeah. uh, wait yeah, for I mean, this to happen. Efficiencies are coming, right? Yeah. Yeah. They are coming. I mean, one of, I mean, real estate has been dormant ab around efficiencies. The capital markets have created a tremendous amount well, of Well, just look, I mean, that's what I look at is I, I Try and always follow what fintechs do because I think that's a good sort of barometer to you know this industry being a little bit laggard to what what's happening with financial services. I mean, you could still look at like doctors and lawyers, right? Doctors and lawyers still exist, and those doctors that are kind of shamans or witch doctors. And this is kind of no disrespect to the alternative medicine industry, but they've been replaced by doctors over the years. And I think the same thing's happening in the real estate space, right? So you know, it's always better to disrupt yourself to be disrupted by someone else. So. To, to your point, right, folks who are, you know, have been, we're in a world that's becoming doctors, right, and those witch doctors are still around saying, I have a hunch, I have a feeling, they're not going to outperform the markets, and those who are using technology, embrace technology to have better results, um, are going to outperform them 10 out of 10 times, right? That's great. 
Anyway, guys, this has been fantastic. Let's uh, just wrap up with something you're working on. What's next? What's coming from each of your uh, sites? Yeah, sure. So um, I'd mentioned earlier, um, part of that manual process, right now we work with existing data streams, right? Data stores, APIs, things like that. But one of the data streams that we're working on automating is that human data stream, which is the analyst in the bullpen going through a, a procedure, what we typically would call workflow, but it's really just a stream that's being done manually. Um, and we're working on something to be able to automate uh, most of the processes that happen within the investment firm. Cool. Jan, what's next, man? You know, obviously we're going to layer on lots of tools, you know, a la carte, people could buy pictures, lease abstracting, discounted cash flows on the site, they, they, they could put all that and organize all that, get it to their clients, so all that's in place. But I, th I think the, the interesting part about it is that, you know, transactions in the middle markets today take 300 days. It's, it's an insane number, right? And, so, you know, it's, it's from data service providers, all should it be 90? Right. Should it be 75? And there's that efficiency we're talking and about. And that's the efficiency that we're right. talking about. So we could, we really could streamline that process. So and more tools in the toolbox. More, we're super excited by that. Rob? So we're adding to our partnerships, our national partners, uh, bringing more money to the, to the properties, and then we're really working heavy on, on workflows and automation in the leasing office to help with retention and, and better engagement. Great. Guy? So uh, I mentioned the, the deal sourcing and uh, analysis. So now uh, we made our first real estate transaction. We plan to have about a quarter billion dollars of AUM uh, in the next 12 months. So we're now uh, moving in the, on the technology side to support the ownership and the disposition period using AI and using the data. Well, thanks guys so much. Um, hopefully this was informative and you start to see the level of sophistication, the technology, the disruption that's um, coming from these four amazing sites. So please check out Skyline AI, Lyra, Byproxy, and Cherry. And thank you all so much for spending some time with me.